What is up you guys? My name is Austin Marks and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist who is pursuing the PA profession, which is the physician assistant career path. So on my YouTube channel, I make videos about respiratory therapy, what it's like being one, uh, the salary, the career path. That's what this video is about here. And I also make videos about my journey on becoming a PA. So if you guys want to see more of that, make sure you like and subscribe. So I've been a respiratory therapist for about a year now. I'm um, probably like most of you and I wanted to originally go into nursing, however, I knew respiratory therapy was potentially an option for me as well. So I went ahead and I shadowed both. Now it was probably my preceptors that convinced me that respiratory therapy was the way to go and I'm glad I did. So I was shadowing the respiratory therapist and we were in the ICU and the patient crapped everywhere. I mean, it was nasty, it stank. Well anyway, the respiratory therapist looks at me and he says, see this? We don't have to deal with this. And he walked out, he grabbed the nurses and said, hey, uh, patient 204 just uh, crapped the bed. So we didn't deal with it, and that was when I made my choice. And in my one year of being a respiratory therapist, I can honestly say I've never wiped one single butt. So I've helped nurses turn a patient to wipe their butt, but I've never actually done it myself. So that is definitely one huge pro about being a respiratory therapist is I don't deal with any of that stuff. So as I said, I was a respiratory therapist for about a year now, and finding a job right out of college was not hard at all. So if I actually wanted to change my job right now, I could, because a lot of hospitals are hiring respiratory therapists because it's a growing field. Uh, if you look at the job outlook between 2018 and 2028, it's about a 21% growth rate, which is much faster than the average career path. Now this also has a lot to do with uh, the population growing. Uh, there's a lot more older people now than there, are, than there were in the past. So therefore, finding a job wasn't hard at all. So as an RT, you can also work in a hospital, so inpatient, you can work outpatient, you can work in a nursing home, you can travel as an RT, you can do many things. Uh, respiratory therapy is definitely an open field. If I want to talk about salary, this is honestly a tough one because the cost of living is different everywhere. So uh, it also can depend if you are a travel RT, if you work inpatient, you work outpatient, you work weekends. It, there's so many variables that go into it. Um, I have a video on that if you guys want to check it out. So, uh, me personally, I'm from Central Pennsylvania. I roughly make about $60,000 a year. Um, I also work PRN, so that's a as-needed job. I kind of pick my schedule with that, as well as working full-time. So I do work a lot, but that is by my choice. Uh, I also talk about the different shifts, as well as uh, what days or holidays you may work. I have a whole video about that. If you guys want to check that out, go ahead. And don't forget to like for that YouTube algorithm. So I talked about where a respiratory therapist could potentially work. I talked about the salary. So now I'm going to talk about the schooling as well as what I actually do as a respiratory therapist. So with the schooling, it's generally a two-year program. However, some schools offer a bachelor's degree. There isn't really a difference. I mean, we all take the same boards. We get the same license. I'm going to make another video talking about the difference between the two and if you can get a higher pay one or the other. I also have another video talking about the APRT, which is the Advanced Practice Respiratory Therapist. So this is a new thing where a respiratory therapist could potentially become a mid-level practitioner or provider. So that would potentially be the same thing as a PA or an MP. So I went to school for two years. I got my associate's degree. I got a job at a hospital and now they are paying for me to get my bachelor's degree. So that's like a win-win. You can also do the same thing for nursing. It, all depends uh, if the place that's hiring you wants you have your BSN or if they can just hire you as your RN. So with my associate's degree I had to go ahead and take the prerequisites to get into the RT program and then once I was actually in the RT program it was about a year and a half. So that was strictly just clinicals and schoolwork working towards respiratory. Once I graduated I took my boards and then I applied for my job and started working. Started making some money. As a respiratory therapist, I am a cardiopulmonary specialist, so uh, I work cardiopulmonary, obviously. I work a lot with the critical care team, so this would be in the ICUs. There are many ICUs. There's the uh, like a surgical ICU, a neuro ICU, you have your NICU, which is your neonatal ICU. Uh, as a respiratory therapist, you can work with as a respiratory therapist, you can work with adults. Or you can go ahead and work with children's or babies. Uh, so you can work with anyone as early as 23 weeks old or anyone who is uh, 108 years old. So I worked with everyone, so I have a little bit of experience. I mean, 
You can work in one field versus the other. You can also get different certifications, so you can be a neonatal pediatric specialist, you can be an adult critical care specialist, you can be like an asthma educator specialist, you can be an ECMO specialist. There are tons of things that respiratory therapists can do to go ahead and improve their career. So saying this, respiratory therapists are the ones who give the breathing treatments such as the nebulizers, the inhalers. We also run the life support machines, so this is your ventilator. So this is when someone has a breathing tube in and we control exactly how much air they're bringing in, how much air they're pushing out, how fast they're breathing. There's honestly so much that goes into that. It's not just air in, air out. It plays a huge role to chemistry and everything in the body. That is something you learn in respiratory school and then you'll use it every single day. So as a respiratory therapist, we also work in the emergency department. So a lot of people who come through that door, they're having respiratory issues, they can't breathe. Breathing is a huge life-sustaining uh, thing that you need to do, obviously. So uh, respiratory therapists play a huge role when it comes to uh, emergency situations. You can also work in a trauma area. So my hospital is a trauma level two. So we get uh, gunshot victims, people who may have hung themselves, motor vehicle accidents, we get all kinds of things. So you gotta be ready, you gotta be able to think on your feet. As a respiratory therapist, you need to be a critical thinker because everything isn't always black and white. Uh, you have to figure out what's going on. So my hospital also does heart surgeries. So when a patient gets an open heart surgery, they come back from the OR, they may still be intubated, so that means they have a breathing tube in their throat. We need to go ahead and try and wean them from the breathing machine. That way they can breathe again on their own. Um, and obviously they just had their chest cracked open, so it's not going to be very easy. So therefore we also give lung expansion therapies, not just to open heart patients, but to many of our patients. We can also give them different therapies to go ahead and try and clear out some of the secretions. There are also many uh, diseases that just deal with strictly the respiratory system. A few of those may include COPD, asthma, cystic fibrosis. We uh, help patients specifically with them, help them understand their lifestyle, we educate them, we go ahead and give them the therapies, that way they can live their best possible life. We do a lot as a respiratory therapist. Respiratory therapy is a critical part of the healthcare team. Uh, many nurses, doctors, physician assistants, um, anyone will go ahead and tell you that RTs are essential. We need them. And if you see what's going on with this COVID-19 pandemic, you'll go ahead and see that respiratory therapists are in high demand. Uh, I know in New York there were tons of ventilators and there just weren't enough RTs to run them. So as an RT running the ventilators, I think this is the one bad thing. Um, I mean, it's just, it's life, it happens. But uh, if someone is cancerous, they may not have long to live and the only reason they're staying alive is due to that breathing tube. We could be the ones that pull the tube basically and potentially in their life. However, we do it uh, with full ethics, good terms, we make sure the family's involved, we do all that kinds of things. We don't just go around pulling the tube on people, that's not what we do at all. So uh, if someone goes and gets in a car accident and they're brain dead, they're going to be a vegetable for the rest of their life, and the family says he would not like this, then we may have to pull the tube. It's probably the one bad thing. Everything else is totally awesome. I uh, love respiratory therapy. If you guys have any other questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.